I'd like to introduce Maurice Schweitzer, and he is a professor here at Wharton of Operations Information and Decision Making, and his co-author of this research paper, uh, Jeremy Yip, and he is a research scholar here at Wharton. And they're going to talk about a very intriguing, I think, paper uh, that they've just completed, and it's called Mad and Misleading Incidental Anger uh, Promotes Deception, which is not something you read about in a research paper every day. Matter of fact, you'll tell us how this is the first time this particular topic has been looked at. Uh, but it is intriguing, and it's about how emotions influence ethical behavior uh, or the potential influence of anger on deception. And you look at the workplace in particular, which, uh, which is especially relevant to our viewers. So please, um, one of you, describe in, in brief terms the uh, overview of that research. Sure, I'm happy to. Um, so our work establishes this link between feeling angry and deceiving others. Deception is a common behavior that occurs in organizations and poses a significant challenge in a variety of interpersonal interactions. For example, in job interviews, candidates may provide misleading statements in order to create a positive impression. Or in negotiations, negotiators will lie about their bottom line in order to claim more value. And so what we investigated here was whether incidental anger, anger that's triggered by an unrelated situation, can promote the use of deception. And what we found was that people who feel angry are more likely to lie to others. We also find that empathy mediates this relationship between feeling angry and deceiving others, such that when people are angry, they become less concerned about how their actions impact others, and this disinhibits them to engage in self-serving deception. So one of the interesting ideas that I think I picked up uh, reading the study was that it's not as if someone did something to you and you're mad at them and now you, you have an incentive to, to be deceptive about something. It's, it's some other free floating anger from over here that gets transferred to another situation. Is, is that right? Yeah, so that's a really important point. So what we study is what's called incidental anger. So anger that's triggered by some unrelated event. So you might have had an argument with your spouse and then you have a meeting at work, or you might have had a disagreement with one partner, and then you end up meeting with a different partner. If the situation is completely unrelated, that anger should not influence our behavior, but we find that it actually does. So what turns out to be important is that here this, this anger bleeds into this unrelated situation, and we become more likely to engage in deception just because we were angry before, and that anger still influences and guides our behavior. Why does it lead to deception and not just, you know, being hostile, or, or well, maybe you're also hostile, but what is it that, about anger that leads to that behavior? Well, what's interesting is that we found is that the anger, as Jeremy was explaining before, disinhibits us we become less empathetic. So we care less about other people in general, and we're now more free or liberated to pursue our self-interest. So it's really a self-interested behavior. And across our studies, we find that when people feel anger, they're really less concerned about other people. And they're not interested in retaliation or just randomly harming other people. It's really just a diminished concern for others, and the pursuit of self-interest now just gets carried away, and it's no longer checked by our empathy for others. That's how we usually operate. When we're feeling angry, we just care less about others, and what we find is that now anger becomes much, so the, the deception becomes much more likely to occur. So being angry makes you more egocentric in a way, and less sensitive? Absolutely. That's, okay, well that's interesting. Um, what were the key takeaways from the study, Jeremy, in your view, or at least the, the main ones? In our investigation, we focused on self-serving deception. These are lies that advantage the liar at the expense of a target. When people are telling self-serving lies, they're often 
engaging in this calculus between what are the costs and benefits for themselves, but also what are the costs and benefits for others. What we find is that anger influences these calculations, where angry people are become more focused on themselves or the benefits to themselves, mm -hmm. and they discount the harm that they may cause others, and that leads them to engage in deception. So our key findings are that when you feel angry, even when it's triggered by an unrelated situation, you're more likely to lie. Mm -hmm. We also find, as Maurice mentioned, that angry people are less empathetic and that uh, disinhibits them to engage in self-interested behavior such as lying. And then we also found that the influence of anger on deception is unique to anger and not to just any negative emotion. So we contrasted the influence of anger with the influence of sadness on deception. And we actually found that only angry pr anger predicted deceptive behavior. It's interesting because <clears throat> when I think of deception, um, maybe this is just my impression, it, it's, it seems more like a little devious. It's like something you, you pre-calculate and you know, have thought about as opposed to like an, an immediate reaction. But, but anger is this, this emotion that I could see would make someone just act more quickly without thinking. And so, so there's like a little disconnect there for me. How does, how does that work? How did that come out um, in your research? Because I know you did four studies actually to, to come up with your conclusions. Is well, that right? Yeah, that's right. So, so we did a series of studies. And in all these studies, we find the same pattern. This anger is triggered by an unrelated event. You get very negative feedback or you watch something that's very disturbing. Uh, across several different inductions, we find that this anger that's triggered, that is triggered immediately then does bleed into this somewhat more strategic behavior. That is, it changes our calculus. And the key idea, as Jeremy was explaining, we just become less empathetic. We care less about others, and we're more focused on our self-interest. And that narrowed focus is what guides us to to exhibit the self-interested behavior, which in our case was deception. It's unethical, but it's also advancing our self-interest at the expense of others. That's what we found. So it's easy to see how that would apply in so many areas of life and politics and world relations and everything else. But in the workplace, in the HR office, uh, what what are the implications and, and is there anything that people can do about this? I mean, is this just an interesting observation, but what do we do with the observation? Well, we urge leaders, managers, and employees to recognize that in our angry moments, we may lose our moral compass. We suggest that managers pay close attention to monitoring their employees when they notice that they're angry, because their angry employees are more likely to cheat. So, so check the stationary closet if there, you have someone <laughs> angry on the floor <laughs> for missing pens and that sort of thing. <laughs> Uh, but that's, I, that's, I mean, I'm joking, of course, but that's, that's sort of the idea is that, that there's a propensity now in someone who's angry to, to do something that isn't going to be good for the organization. Well, I, th I think, right. yeah, I, th I think as Jeremy's pointing out, it's important for us to recognize it's true for us. That is, our own moral compass becomes less clearly pointed north when we feel angry, and it's true for others. That is, other people are going to behave more strategically, more self, in a more self-interested way, and a, in a less ethical way when they're feeling angry. Mm -hmm. And again, it could be some unrelated trigger mm -hmm. that has made them feel that way. But you're suggesting that there's a, there's a benefit to developing organizationally some kind of a self-awareness in people that will benefit the organization. Is that right? Maybe you could elaborate on that idea a little bit. Right. So I think the goal is to make people themselves aware, employees themselves aware of their inclinations when they are feeling angry. It, um, deceptions conceptualize as a cognitive process. And what we're showing here is how emotions can have a, a profound influence on that process. Uh, but we also want to urge leaders and managers to recognize this behavior in their employees and perhaps intervene in that. There's other related research that's shown that when people become aware 
that their emotions are incidental or irrelevant, that that can also diminish the effects of that emotion on behavior. And I know, I guess, maybe we touch on this, but is, this is different than a retribution where someone actually does something to you and you have a specific reason to be angry at that person and might seek to have some kind of retribution. But what, what in the study, or in, in all of your research in this area, what surprised you? What surprises came out of it that you didn't expect? I think one big surprise was when we looked at the so we contrasted how people, angry people with neutral people, when there was an incentive that was present and when there was an incentive that was absent. And what we found was that we were able to disentangle the motive to harm others from the motive to pursue the self-interest. So when people are angry, they're not being punitive and harming anyone around them. Instead, what we're finding is that when people are angry, that anger curtails empathy and that leads to more self-interested behavior, in this case, self-serving lies. That's interesting. Um, what sets this research apart from other research in these areas? Well, I, think, I think one key idea here is this, this link, as Jim was explaining, between emotion and cognition. So how we feel, even if it's unrelated to the current situation, influences how we think and how we act. And in this case, we're linking anger with deceptive, unethical behavior. So this is the first work to do that. We often feel angry in the workplace. We often feel angry when we're in a conflict with somebody else. And our work is the first to demonstrate that when we feel ang anger, it could actually lead us to engage in underhanded and more self-interested behavior in ways that we might not normally condone. And certainly, as an organization, we should be highly aware of. So I kind of suggest that conflict resolution interventions and courses uh, would benefit an organization in a couple ways, not just that you have less conflict and maybe more cooperation, but also you could curtail some of the deception that might come out of the conflict. Yeah, Deceptive uh, behavior. Right, absolutely. So that is, we, we should recognize the, the feelings that we have, the feelings that others have, are going to guide their behavior in predictable ways. And we should be sensitive to that. Jeremy mentioned rec recognizing emotions might help diminish their effects. But we should also be sort of broadly aware of how we're feeling is likely to influence how we think and behave. And in some cases, it, we might be able to curtail unethical behavior by, by muting that, mm -hmm. that, that, that anger. So before I ask you what you'll be looking at next, if you're gonna look, if you're gonna pursue this further, uh, let me just ask, is there anything I haven't asked that would be uh, of major importance in this study that we haven't covered that you can think of? Or did we do such a great job that? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Uh, let me actually think about uh, that one. <laughs> yeah. I think, one of the questions that you asked was really important. That is, it's not that when we're feeling angry, we want to retaliate against other people or that we want to pay it forward that somebody was angry, you know, angry at me or somebody blocked my goal and I want to go take it out on somebody else. That's not what we observed. What we found was that people just became much more self-interested, self-serving and became less constrained by concern for others in advancing their own goals. And I think that's one of the things that I think was most surprising about this work. So if that's the way things work around here, then I'm gonna look out for number one. Is that, right. is that kind of it? That's right. Okay, so in terms of what you might look at next then, what, what are the possibilities? Well, these findings have informed uh, some of our current work where we're investigating the relationship between anger and perspective taking and what we're beginning to find that's consistent with some of the work that we've just discussed is that when people feel angry, they become more egocentric. Perspective taking is a different type of cognitive process where people adopt another person's viewpoint in a situation. And we are learning that people who feel angry tend to view a situation, to anchor on their own viewpoint and not adjust to or accommodate other people's viewpoints. All right. Well, thank you both for coming in. Thank, thank you. you.